So I welcome you all on behalf of Association of Muslim Professionals. And with me on the panel, I have a speaker for the day, Mr. Ankush Puri. I have uh, Mr. Iftikhar Bedkar, who is the head of Employment Assistance Cell. And I also have Mr. Ahsan Chisti, who is the senior coordinator for Employment Assistance Cell. So before we jump into the live session, uh, we will just start this session with a short qiraat. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. Wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad. Sadaqallahul azim. Thank you so much, everyone. Now, I see that today's topic is about personality development, which is one of the very important uh, thing that every individual needs, not only in his professional life, but in his personal life as well. So we will be uh, talking about personality development today. So I request uh, Mr. Ahsan Chisti to kindly take it over from here, introduce employment assistance cell and introduce our speaker for the day. Thank you so much. Uh, Ahsan Bhai. Assalamualaikum. Good evening, everyone. My name is Hassan Chishti. I would now like to welcome Mr. Ankush Puri. He is a seasoned facilitator and uh, in the making coach. He enjoys the process of channeling human behavior transformation towards organizational transformation and has been actively involved in designing and leading consulting projects for clients. He enjoys writing and he has had the privilege and contrib of contributing to business magazines, newspapers, and academic journals of national and international repute. I would now request our speaker, Mr. Ankush Puri, to please carry on with the session today. Thank you so much, Mr. Hassan, and uh, very, very good evening to everyone. Uh, my good evening and special thanks to Mr. Iftikar, Mr. Shahzad, and Mr. Hassan once again, and all of you all who are attending this session. So thank you so much for your time and a pleasure being here. I think uh, the topic for the day is uh, pretty interesting and uh, Mr. Hassan, thanks for the introduction as well. Okay, but what, what I'm also going to do is uh, just set some ground rules. Okay, so I'm going to request everyone that uh, we will be having some time at the end for, uh, you know, an interaction and please feel free. There would be some uh, questions that I'll throw up. Okay, so please uh, feel free to answer those questions. Okay, and it's absolutely fine because there, there are no marks for, uh, you know, right answers or wrong answers. So you can please feel free. Okay. Uh, with your permission, what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to share a couple of slides. Okay, so you could just let me know once you are able to see these slides and to save on the bandwidth. Once the slides come up, I'm just going to go off camera. So I'll keep coming on and off. Okay, because the point for the day is the, okay. All right. So what we're discussing today, I've deliberately called it something very different. So what I've called it is your story. Okay. Uh, end. Okay. When we reach the end of the session, that's uh, sometime from now. Okay. In meanwhile, uh, who am I? A professional like you, okay, who's working from home right now. Okay. Uh, I think what I'd like to add to what Mr. Hassan just mentioned about me is uh, I've, I've spent major part of my life operating out of Pune, okay, a youngest of four siblings, um, blessed with two children and one wife. Okay, so that's who I am. Okay. Uh, I've also got some other people along with me today who I'd just like to introduce. Okay, so I've got these two people with me today. One is called the Lap Cop and the other is called Bandit Witch. Okay, in case you're guessing, what I'm actually talking about is uh, my techno friends who are supporting me today. So that's my laptop and my bandwidth. 
more like uh, Rahu and Ketu. Okay, so in case anything goes wrong in between, you know whom to blame. That is not me. That is my laptop and the bandwidth. Okay, so the laptop and the bandwidth, which is uh, who are accompanying me today. Okay, and they're going to help us as well. And I pray to them that they're not going to disturb us. Okay. All right. So let's bring up something. Okay, and that's a question for you. Right. Any guesses? Which movie is this? Okay, you could throw up your responses in the chat box. That's absolutely fine. You would, I'm so sorry, you would love, want to go off mute and, and uh, you want to talk about it or just give me the name. That's also fine. Okay. But, no discussions about the movie, it's just the movie name, which is the movie. I see that, yeah, okay. No, I, I see a response from Masra Jahan, that's Divar, absolutely fine, okay. Right, not surely, yes, it is Divar. I see that from Kamlunisa, absolutely right. The movie is Divar, okay. Now Divar, for, for the ones who've seen it, right, there were these uh, two famous scenes between the brothers, okay. Uh, and for the ones who have not seen it, I'm sure you'll be able to understand very soon, you know, what are we discussing, okay. And it's not a reflection of your age. If, you, if you've if seen Divar, it definitely doesn't mean that you belong to that era, but it's, it's a pretty famous movie, okay. So there were these two famous scenes between the brothers, okay. No problems. In, in case you've got a problem with the language, I'm going to stick to English. So rest assured that you, you'll understand the meaning of, you know, what, what we're trying to reach over here. Okay. All right. So it's, it's a story between two brothers and there were these two famous scenes between the brothers. Right. Any guesses over here? Which scene is this that you see on the screen? There's a punchline to both the scenes. So anybody who can guess that? Two things. I see one response over there. Mere paas ma hai, okay. All right. And, and the other one, no, this is not this scene. Okay, but which was the other one? Yes, yeah, Sushila, so, so I, I see that this was the epic dialogue, but which, which was this scene? Okay, let, let me not uh, take away too much time over here, okay. And I hope you're able to hear me clearly now, okay. Right, I see another response coming up from Faisal, okay. All right, let, let me just explain the scene, right? And for the ones who are not uh, familiar with the movie or even the language, okay, I'm going to stick to English. So uh, this was a scene between two brothers, right? One, they've grown up together from, a, you know, from coming from very, very difficult circumstances. The mother actually took care of them. The elder one decided that he's going to work so that the younger one studies and grows up and has a good career, okay? Now the elder one grows up and, uh, you know, starts off with a dock worker, and then ends up in, uh, you know, as one of the biggest smugglers of the city. Okay. And the younger one, after having completed his studies, actually turns into an inspector. Okay. A police inspector. So he's part of the police forces. And this is the particular day when the younger one, that's the inspector, gets to know that his brother is actually a part of a smuggler, smuggling group. Right. And when the elder brother walks into his house, he's confronted by the younger brother along with their mother. Okay. And the younger brother puts across a piece of paper to the elder brother and he says, please sign this. Okay. And the elder one says, uh, what's this supposed to be? The younger one says, these are your surrender papers. Okay. So you've, you're surrendering to the authorities and you own up for all the crimes that you've committed. Okay. Now the response to that from the elder brother was, 
he says i'll sign it but i will not be the only one to sign it and i will not be the first one to sign it okay so it's a pretty pretty famous uh, dialogue between the two brothers okay where he says go and get the signature of that guy who you know abused our mother go and get the signature of that guy who first hit me or who wrote something on my hand okay and there's a history to that in the movie okay but i'm sure you'll be able to understand the meaning here so he says uh, and just just to add to that effect i'm moving on to uh, you know hindi for a second over there so he says jao pehle us aadmi ka sign lekar aao jisne mere haath pe ye likha tha jao pehle us aadmi ka sign leke aao jisne hamari maa ko gaali dekar kaam se nikala tha okay and he says after that once you've got the signature from all those people okay only then then will i sign these papers okay now if you if you just think about this dialogue for a minute between two brothers okay so one who's possibly on the wrong side doing something wrong the other one on the right side who's asking the wrong guy to correct himself okay and you understand the essence of the conversation there what is actually happening is the younger one is saying please correct your path and come to the correct path and the elder one is saying i'll correct myself but you first ask the world to correct themselves okay only after the world has corrected themselves then i will correct myself right so what we are actually talking about is there are two kinds of people in life okay one who believes that if there has to be a change in their life they will be the ones who will initiate it okay and the second category is going to be the people who will always say i will change but i'll not change first please change the world around me please ask everybody else to change only after that i will change myself right and that's the first thing that i'd like to discuss with everyone here is the moment you talk about your life right i'll relate it to a topic later on but the moment you talk about your life we have to understand that if we want a change in our life that change starts with us you can't say jao pehle us aadmi ka sign lekar aao you can't say go ask the world to change and then i'll change myself right any change that you desire in your life will only start with yourself first so i i hope all of us are on the same platform and all of us agree to this any kind of a change that we need to see in our life that change has to start off with us right thank you rohi thanks for your response okay so let's move on from here okay now uh, my understanding is all of us we've got uh, thank you sushila thank you fazal okay so my understanding is you know we we are at different junctures in our career okay when i said career i'm i'm also including uh, you know the education right because that's the foundation for our career okay that's where all of us start off from okay now many a times right from your school days okay it could be people around you you come across a lot of people okay i'll keep friends aside though friends are also a part of this cycle but i think i'll keep friends aside okay uh i think the way all of us are brought up okay we tend to assign a lot of importance to people around us it's also a conditioning okay so when i say conditioning it's uh you know for example and in about elders okay we believe we have a phrase we assign a lot of respect to people on account of their age to teachers we assign a lot of a teacher later on it could be in the form of a boss okay now it's very easy you know when you're growing up in life okay and that growing up never stops huh? okay so when you're growing up in life okay it's very easy that you start assigning certain labels to yourself on the basis of how you're seen by these people around so sometimes it could be how a teacher treated you in school 
right? And you actually start believing that you are that. <clears throat> if the teacher believes you're intelligent, you're hardworking, okay, you're very good, okay, um, you know, at whatever that you're doing, okay, fantastic. If you've heard those words, very nice. If you've heard those words from elders around you, very nice, okay. If you've been hearing those words from your bosses or wherever there is formal authority, fantastic, good for you, okay. But if at all, you've come across somebody who's not used positive words for you or who has possibly impacted your con confidence somewhere, saying that you're not good at this or you don't do that properly, okay? I'll request you to take a minute off right now, okay? I'll also request you Think about such people, okay? See, we are conditioned, we are conditioned to respect authority. We are conditioned I, I guess, uh, the time that I gave for reflection was good enough now. Okay. I, I don't know, uh, you know, what part was heard last. So I'll, I'll just request if, uh, you know, uh, somebody could just let me know what, what was the last sentence heard or what was the last part that was heard? The last part which we heard was uh, related to we stand uh, together or we respect the authority. That was the last. Right. Right. Thank you so much, Mr. Pascal. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so as, as I was talking about earlier, uh, see, it's, it's something like, uh, you know, since we can respect authority, and as I was talking about, uh, I'm just going to bring up the same slide where we were. Okay, so when, when we talk about uh, authority, okay, and uh, different factors, Okay, so it, it could be uh, because of formal authority, it could be teachers, it could be people around in whatever capacity that you've interacted with. In case they've been using good words for you, fantastic for you, you know, you're very fortunate. Okay, but there are also some times when you do not come across some very good feedback or you do not see the kind of appreciation that you're expecting from the world around. Okay, and that's where I would just like to share something which is very, very dear to my heart. I have been taught this by my mother. As a child, she always told me, Zindagi mein kabhi burai apne father ki bhi mat lena, lekin achai apne dushman ki bhi le lena. Okay, which means what she said is, pick up the best even from your adversaries. Okay, but please do not pick up any ill habits, bad habits, any bad behavior, even from your father, right? Okay, and I, I think it's very, very important for all of us to have our filters on, okay? Because please remember, you are a product of the interaction with your environment, okay? How you come across to people is going to be a reflection of how you feel about yourself. So my request is, while we believe in respecting authority, while we believe in respecting, uh, you know, uh, formal authority, informal authority, age, absolutely fine. Okay, do that because that's good behavior. We are taught that. Okay, but at the same time, also please have your filters on, right? When I say filters, sometimes the feedback that you get is very important. So it's important to listen to people, understand what they're trying to tell you. Okay. Absorb it, right? Uh, if there's something good for you, pick it up. Okay, if it means improvement for you, pick it up. If it's the start point of a change for you, small or big, pick it up. Okay, but at the same time, my request is don't let anything destroy your confidence. Okay, your self, your self-worth in your own eyes. Okay, if there is some feedback, think of it constructively. Right. But 
do not let it impact your inner being because that inner being is your life if you are alive from within it will be seen in every single thing that you do it will be there in your eyes it will be there on your face right it will be there in the way you speak okay so keep that intact right i'm i'm sure you know uh, we appear for so many interviews in our journeys okay we have these kind of interactions and so there are, there are times when everything does not go the way we wanted it to go okay my request to everybody here is and and for the youngsters who are going to appear for a lot of interviews okay never ever believe that a rejection in interview is your rejection do not judge yourself so soon okay everybody's got pluses everybody's got minuses so it's your years it's your filters pick up what the world is telling you but at the same time what you really need to look out for is a match okay it's all about a right match right so fair enough there could be times when you appear for an interview where possibly uh, you know the recruiters or uh, the interviewer does not feel that you fitted in that is not a judgment on yourself it's just that possibly your candidate was not matching that job it's absolutely fine right it could also be about individuals around you sometimes there are individuals who really matter to us okay and we sometimes feel dejected because you know we feel rejected or we feel that you know people don't like us around no not necessarily sorry okay it's once again all about a match okay so keep your filters on and i'm going to repeat that again and again it's important to hear what the world is telling you but it's also important to keep your filters on because sometimes you may also come across people who are not worthy of even telling you who you really are right so it's it's a balance on both the ends okay uh, they they could be untrained teachers uh, they could be not very good or not very professional managers okay but i i think you really need to have the filters on in terms of you know understanding who the person is understanding the merit of what the person is saying right so what i'm repeating is there are no rights or wrongs okay it's all about a match but once again keep your filters on okay now having said that uh, possibly what what i'm also going to do is uh, move on to um i'm i'm not taking deliberately a pause over here but i'm i'm going to take a pause after the next topic that we've discussed okay now what i'm moving on to is when when we talk about our professional journeys okay many a times uh it's important to just take a pause and reflect back on what is the definition of success for you okay i'm going to relate it once again back to that gleam in the eyes okay uh you know that smile on your face that confidence in your being okay that confidence in your voice where does all that come from it only comes from the fact when you are actually happy doing what you're really doing okay now um, like i said there could be feedback around fantastic pick up the good things look at the merit in the feedback okay but let it not let nothing in the world break you as a being you are a beautiful being who's been created by god you've got your own strengths okay so when you talk about a professional journey very often we do hear people say that you know okay fine uh, well success is all about you know what's the designation that i'm holding okay success is all about what's the kind of money that i'm making okay not necessary i'm say all of us have got our own definitions of success okay professional journeys the moment you start entering into an organization and so you start hearing the language of you know well uh, there's there's a hierarchical pyramid you know so people talk about skills okay so people will talk about things like uh, you know if you've got technical skills you are at the bottom of the pyramid okay you've got interpersonal effectiveness you know you've got sorry your personal effectiveness skills okay which is your behavior your communication your thinking capability maybe you know you you start moving up in the hierarchy okay you've got you're a good team player get along very well with people okay you move a little bit up in the hierarchy you've got team leading capacity you still move further up 
Okay, you've got strategic skills, planning skills, and so you're moving further up in the hierarchy. Okay. Now, my my request to everybody here would be: This is a conventional pyramid that corporates follow. Okay, so fair enough. It's these are business organizations. Okay, they do look at the kind of skills that they require for various positions. Okay. so technical skills generally you know you'll you'll find uh, people working as individual contributors okay personal effectiveness skills a little bit better because obviously i'm say everything in the world is you know with people okay so even if you are uh, you know a highly highly technical skilled person but you're still interacting with people okay then you've got the ability to get around with people be a part of a team work along with people okay so fair enough there is there is a hierarchy assigned to that business organizations do look at that okay but so if you are able to develop these skills you are able to understand that's the change path that you want to bring in yourself absolutely fine and so please do that please pursue your career that way okay but at the same time what i'll also request is understand your personal triggers understand what keeps you happy okay and when i talk about triggers i'm referring to both the sides so triggers that get you going okay so it's it's like you know you you actually get a kick out of it you love the love doing that particular thing okay on the other hand it could also be triggers that put you off okay what do you get upset with what do you when do you lose your cool okay now it's very very important for your own being to have a very clear understanding of these triggers because if you're not able to understand these triggers you might get caught into a trap of running in somebody else's race right so please do not do that to yourself don't get caught into a trap of running or participating in somebody else's race okay look at your own race what is your race in life what are you trying to achieve okay what are your triggers what get you going and what puts you off okay what puts you off is possibly something where you need to you know stretch yourself need to look at how do i overcome this so fine fair enough it it may put me off okay but can i have some kind of controls on my behavior so that people do not see me that way right it's possibly impacting me okay and the positive triggers absolutely fine so if you know your positive triggers possibly look out for work that gets you going okay i'm saying this because in my professional career i've come across a lot of people who made conscious choices so i've seen people move up in the corporate hierarchy and then later on realize that well that's that's not something that i'm enjoying okay i would possibly come down to the lower end of the pyramid it's fine i'll i'll find my balance in life you know how do i do it okay but that's something that i enjoy so i would like to stick on to that there are people who are very conscious about the fact that you know i i would uh, prefer possibly i've tried it out but i would prefer a role where i've got minimal people interaction because i realize that you know fair enough i can manage it okay i've taught myself how to do that okay i've mastered the art but am i actually enjoying it no i'm not enjoying it. okay so fair enough let me find my place let me find my balance in life okay i want to do something which i'm very happy doing okay i'll find my balance i need to have some income i need to have some respect okay i need to have a good position but i'll try and find my way out okay uh it's it's not as easy as it uh, sounds over here but i'll request you to be conscious of what you're doing once again relating it back to the fact to that gleam in your eyes the smile on your face the confidence in your voice okay that's who you are okay and if you are at peace with yourself okay every single person around the world can sense that peace and they can see that on your face right so when when we talking about uh personality i'm i'm just relating it to the topics that we had mentioned earlier okay and i'm also now going to relate it to the title that i used for this session because it's your story so the change starts with you 
the filters are yours you are the one who's making conscious choices in your career okay you are the one who know your own triggers right okay at at this juncture i'm just going to take a small little pause okay and i'm also going to look at the chat window looking at do we have something over here yeah absolutely we'll be having a q and a session later on okay but are we fine with this are we all aligned to this okay so i'm i'm going to pop a question now okay and you can use the chat window uh, you know if you feel like uh, responding to that okay i'm sorry i see a question from bharat please tell what's the story of i'm i'm sorry i i didn't understand that question possibly i'm so sorry maybe we'll reserve it for the q and a session okay you you can talk about it during the q and a session or you can just let, elaborate on your question then okay but now there's there's another thing that i would like to talk about since we are also talking about professional journeys and we're talking about organization and we said roles of your choice okay picking up something that keeps you going okay there's another buzzword that the corporate world uses today okay and it's it's a big word when you talk about uh, you know picking up an individual right uh so when when you're selecting people when you're looking at people for promotions within organizations okay there's one word that's going around the corporate world today and that's possibly one attribute that everybody looks out for in a professional okay uh any guesses and i'll start throwing some hints over there okay so my first hint is going to be a big hint the letter starts with a the word alphabet starts with the letter a okay i know that's not too much of a big hint okay but yet you could just give it a try the second alphabet of the word is c okay i see act right mr iftikhar very close to that uh mr abdul says attitude yes yeah it is a reflection of attitude okay fine we we've got somebody saying ability okay that's that's a fantastic word i'll come back to ability as well there we have mr fazal saying it absolutely right okay that is a word that we're talking about over here and i'm going to relate all the earlier three as well act attitude ability okay but the word that we're talking about is accountability the best word today okay anything that forces the world to respond positively to you okay is accountability okay but it's a word that starts deep down within yourself okay now when i talk about accountability i'm going to give it a very simple form and very simple definition over here okay of course you can see the points that i've put up on the slide there okay i'll give it a very very simple definition right and i'm going to put it across in the form of a question to you any role that you take up or any responsibility that you take up right when you leave that role or when you leave that responsibility okay can you look back and say that i made a tremendous impact over there right now that is accountability when you're holding yourself accountable for a role or for a responsibility that you've undertaken okay that becomes a reflection of you okay that is who you are to people because it's your story okay any single role that you get into people will talk about the impact that you created in that role people will talk about what happened to that organization what happened to that department what happened to all the problems over there after this person came in so it's like before you and after you was there a difference 
okay now that is accountability okay why am i talking about accountability over here like i just said that is going to be your story okay that is going to be how people talk about you that is how you are remembered okay that is how people start responding to you okay and if you get positive responses from people that is exactly what your soul needs okay because it it actually feeds on to those positive responses you grow more stronger you grow more confident you are more happy okay and it's seen in your behavior so it's it's a cycle it's starting off with you and it's coming back to you right it's very easy to hold the world around you responsible and say that jao pehle us aadmi ka sign lekar aao it's very easy to be a victim of that mentality the same elder brother that we spoke about earlier very very easy to say that person did this to me and that is why i did this to that person okay it's very easy to fall into that trap of blaming the world around you okay but please remember every single behavior starts from you okay it's how you respond to situations it's how you controlling your behavior in a particular role okay i'm also going to talk about one more aspect of this definition of accountability okay and uh, i think a very simple thing okay but i i think the meaning uh, in it is quite deep okay so when you get into a role any role that you might be playing you know it it could be at the college level it could be as a professional okay but any role that you're playing it's very easy to confuse the role with the individual which means the role with yourself right the answer lies in dissociating the role from yourself okay there would be times when you're a part of a team okay you may not like somebody you really don't know the reason why but you just don't like somebody okay and it's very very easy to fall into that type of you know i've got the authority and the boss here and the leader here i don't like this person so you know that's how my behavior towards that person change changes okay now when you start dissociating the role from the responsibility is where you start realizing that the role that you're playing okay is a different individual okay when you're into that role you have to be away from your personal biases okay you cannot allow those personal biases to come in so the question that you need to bring up to yourself is am i judging the situation or i in the capacity of that role judging the situation or judging the individual okay so who is this who is looking at a situation or judging the individual or judging the situation is it me or is it the role so please dissociate yourself over there okay and you'll see possibly the decisions that you make okay you start getting respected for those decisions you'll start getting respected as a leader you'll start getting respected as a human being okay but the answer lies there in dissociating yourself from the individual right i i see some questions here uh, well i i think around 8:30 we we going to take another i think 5 to 7 minutes before we wind up our discussion that's my uh, monologue and then come to the question answer session okay. yes that is correct you can continue thank you so much all right so let let me move on to something else something very interesting that you see over here you you see a person over here okay i am going to ask you who's this person do we know this individual any guesses you could type it in the chat if it's not too much of uh, trouble there but you could just type it into the chat window absolutely mr iftikhar absolutely there it is so we are talking about mr winston churchill okay mr winston churchill i am going to quickly run you through this okay the turning point in his career was the second world war okay second world war when england was being beaten absolutely right the prime minister of england during world war 2 england was being battered by germany okay and england really didn't know what what's going to happen okay uh, people of the country had given up hope 
but it was this man with his fiery speeches you know who kept up the hopes alive so he kept telling the people that you know no and so we we are going to come victorious out of this war okay also the man responsible for pulling in us into the war of course apart from uh, you know the pearl harbor incident okay and of course all of us know okay the allied forces emerged victorious of the war winston churchill was a hero known for his fiery speeches known for you know the confidence that he instilled into the country at that point of time okay and known to be a leader at the world stage at that point of time and immediately after world war 2 after the victory there were elections in england and who do you think won the elections so the man was winning he was on a winning streak right he got them victorious after the war out of the war okay and who do you think won the elections in england immediately after this surprise of surprises it was not mr winston churchill but it was his political adversary and the other party that won the elections okay and the reason for that was because people of england believed that mr winston churchill was the right fit for war time but not for peace time right now which means what we are also talking about is people believe that mr winston churchill's style of dealing with people is not going to change be it war or peace so that style was very good during war time but that style is not very good during peace time okay and when we talk about our professional world today when we talk about the corporates today and say covid has taught all of us anything can happen any day we don't know what are the kind of changes that we'll come across in our professional careers situations change every day technology is changing government rules are changing uh, any anything around you right social changes okay uh, political changes economic changes so many of them happening every single day okay now one of the important aspects that i'd like to talk about as a professional today i think is you don't have the liberty of saying that this is the way i operate with the world this is the way i interact with people this is my style of doing things another trap for professionals today right you can't stick to one style otherwise we are out of a role very soon okay what is required is the agility right so you really need to be very quick on your toes to adapt your style of dealing with people style of dealing with situations your thought patterns okay and that's another thing that every professional is asked for today is agility right so that's another word that i'll remember you all to i'll i'll request you all to remember that's after accountability what we are also talking about is agility okay so where we started off from we said any kind of a change starting off with us we said our filters should be on we should listen to the good feedback but do not let yourself your inner self be destroyed we said understand your triggers pick what what you want to do in life pick what keeps you happy okay pick what gets you going okay understand your negative triggers as well be on the lookout for them stretch so you're not spoiling your story okay you're not displaying wrong behaviors to people okay the other two words that we spoke about very recently were accountability and agility and with that let me also now move on to another interesting story okay and we've got two characters here okay for those who don't recognize them i'll i'll give you a little bit of a background there okay but what we're talking about is two well known faces in india very popular okay one of them known as the first superstar of hindi cinema okay and the other one known as possibly the eternal superstar of hindi cinema okay so age has not taken away the tag of a superstar from him at all okay but a very interesting fact that i would like to talk about over here is yes this this comes from anand okay and we are talking about rajesh khanna and amitabh bachchan okay so if if i talk about uh, mr khanna over here okay 1969 there was a movie that uh, came in okay and uh, i i think the movie just not only changed the course of mr rajesh khanna's professional history but it also changed the course of hindi cinema forever okay and the movie was aradhna absolutely right okay overnight the man turned into a superstar okay after that his spate of hits just went on 
okay went on and on the success was unparalleled nobody before him nobody after him they say has seen that kind of a success that mr khanna saw okay the man was declared a superstar a word point for the first time in the hindi cinema looking at the kind of popularity this man enjoyed there are multiple incidences of you know what people talk about in various books various blogs about the kind of popularity that this man enjoyed okay to the extent where people said that he was god right producers used to line out of his house waiting for only 2 minutes or waiting for only 5 minutes from him because they wanted him to work or do something for him okay and they said that anything that this man touched was gold okay the only person in hindi cinema who managed to give 14 flops in a row as well as 15 jubilees in a row okay but the year 1972 when he gave 14 flops one after the other not a dent on his popularity okay that was the magic that was the charisma that this man held okay and how long did this charisma last how long did the superstar him last actually his peak was from 1969 to 1975 okay in fact 1974 right after 74 they say the star lost his sheen okay he was very much there okay but he had lost his sheen whereas if i talk about the next superstar who came onto the scene mr amitabh bachchan okay they say he took over from rajesh khanna okay they say he turned out to be the next superstar in the hindi cinema okay and how long did his superstar him last any guesses so people say right until now absolutely right okay he still continues he still holds that kind of a respect okay he commands that kind of a respect okay he still a name that people want to feature in their movie okay now what could be the reason for this okay a very very interesting scenario over here and i'll request all of you all to just hear this out even if you're not familiar with the names absolutely fine i'm sure you'll you'll understand what i'm saying over here okay let's let's just look at something over here which is very interesting right i'll i'll talk about uh, you know if i talk about what supported mr bachchan lasting so long apart from the other things you know where people talk about you know a lot of other factors his voice the way he is is adapted himself okay to the changing times you can also attribute a lot to the people who stayed loyal with him and kept repeating him in their movies okay namely a few of them uh, mr manmohan desai number 1 okay uh, mr yash chopra okay number 2 right uh, so just just look at this example now mr manmohan desai his first two movies were actually with mr rajesh khanna where from a no one he all of a sudden his banner became a popular banner okay and one of the biggest banners okay two silver jubilees with mr rajesh khanna okay mr yash chopra who started his career once again with mr rajesh khanna the first movie that is directed ittefaq with rajesh khanna a super hit the first movie that mr yash chopra produced dag a super hit once again with rajesh khanna okay uh banners which were not too big at that point of time so i am talking about somebody like a mr shakti samanta okay all of a sudden became a big banner spate of hits with mr rajesh khanna one after the other and the golden combination of gulshan nanda shakti samanta rd burman and kishore kumar okay unforgettable right you also can talk about somebody like mr rishikesh mukherjee okay a banner which was not so popular but all of a sudden became a big commercial banner with anand navakaram bavarchi all starring mr rajesh khanna and now just look at the turn of events all of a sudden mr manmohan desai moves on to mr amitabh bachchan with movies like amar akbar anthony naseeb kuli mat okay mr rishikesh mukherjee moves on to mr amitabh bachchan with movies like mili chupke chupke abhiman mr yash chopra moves on to mr amitabh bachchan with movies like tiwar silsila kabhi kabhi kala patthar mohabbate and the list goes on why did all these people who started off with mr khanna all of a sudden move on to mr amitabh bachchan the people who grew big with mr khanna had all almost at the same time moved on to mr bachchan 
as much as i would like to give the credit to mr bachan for his talent i would also give the credit to mr khanna because as mentioned in the books by mr yasir usman on rajesh khanna and by mr gautam chintamani on rajesh khanna okay they say mr khanna had started believing he was god right they say he started dictating his own terms they say the man lost sight of professionalism because he believed he was god he believed he was setting the rules for the industry okay as a result what started happening was anybody who worked on close quarters with mr khanna when they saw the tantrums of this man and not to blame him because nobody else before him at the age of 29 or 30 had seen that kind of popularity in this country okay and they say the man every single person who worked along with mr khanna okay is said to be afraid of working with him again because it was difficult to manage him as an individual they could not tolerate his tantrums they could not tolerate his unprofessionalism okay and in spite of the fact okay in spite of the that there are rumors that there was a very famous movie being discussed in his house okay and uh, it is said that mr salim javed who were given their first break by mr khanna as writers okay as story writers they were given their break by mr khanna okay it is said they were discussing a story in his house okay one evening and some differences between them where mr khanna possibly did not treat them well or they didn't come to terms and when they walked out of his house that night they decided that they are never ever going to work with this man not only that they said we'll also ensure that we create another superstar the story that they were discussing and the production house was mr yash chopra the story that they were discussing that night was divar okay and they ensured the character that they were discussing becomes even more powerful even more uh, you know interesting for people to relate with okay and the rest is history we know who came into divar okay but it's also said they told mr yash chopra we will not part with the story if you decide to work with mr khanna on this movie okay and the rest is history so what i'm trying to say is now just think of this okay when mr khanna passed away in the year 2012 okay once again there was a lati charge in bombay bombay was paralyzed that was the kind of fans that he saw on the streets that day okay that was the kind of a crowd that he drew even that evening in bombay okay and that was very much like the crowds used to draw earlier in his heydays okay people jammed the streets of bombay there were people flying in from across the country there were messages coming in from pakistan and from bangladesh okay to mourn his death it was the biggest news event of that particular year okay this was the craze that this man had even then so his fans were still there his fans were still there but he was never able to pass on his talent to his external customers to his fans okay and the reason for that was only because his internal customers had rejected him right people who worked with him his producers directors co-stars musicians lyricists were now no longer would to work with mr khanna okay so what we are also trying to say is your story is not about who you believe you are okay your story is about how people see your capability and your capability is not only your performance or your competence alone your capability is a function of your reputation your network and your competence right so my request to everyone is when you're looking at your performance you might be fantastic at your work but look at the reputation that you're creating when you work with people around okay look at the network you are creating when you work with people around whenever you have an opportunity help people invest in your network build up your network because they are the ones who are going to talk about you like mr bachan every single person who works with mr bachan talks about the man's professionalism talks about how the man is humble even till date right does that mean that mr bachan is not taking money from the producers obviously i am saying he is taking his commercial charges 
Okay, but every single person who works with Mr. Bachchan now becomes a brand ambassador for him. And that is what builds his capability. That is what takes him further. Okay. So, choice is right there in front of us. The story is right there in front of us. And on that note, I'm also going to throw up some questions for reflection for all of y'all. Okay. And it's going to be, do you take responsibility for your life? Right, every change starts off with yourself. So are you taking that responsibility or are you falling into the trap of blaming the world? Look at the filters that you have around. Every single person gives you feedback. Don't, do not destroy yourself, okay, who you are, right? Because that's the charm that you have. Can you separate the role from the individual? Are you willing to make a difference? Are you up for accountability? Are you agile or are we like Winston Churchill? And are you working on your capability formula? Okay. So that's the thought that I would like to leave everyone with. And on that note, I'm also going to throw open the window for any question and answers. So, uh, Mr. Puri, I do not see much of the open questions as of now. So if you okay. want to take another couple of minutes to conclude the session, that's all right. No, absolutely fine. I, I think my conclusion is going to be just a few of these questions for reflection yeah, yeah, yeah. for everyone. Definitely, yeah. because I do not see uh, much of the open question. I, uh, there I, are few questions. I have a question. Quite relevant. Shazad, yeah. Shazad, I have a question for Mr. Puri for, for my sandwich. Yes, 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 you can please go ahead and ask him on the mic. Sure. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. It was a very interesting uh, presentation. As in uh, myself, uh, is. Uh, Myself having more than 15, 16 years of experience. Because you talked about the team, uh, the, um, team leadership, you talked about and all that. I have seen that all. The main reason, uh, the, the my question is that why people start hating a particular person, irrespective, irrespective, he could be a team member and all that, but still he hates. Right. But he has done nothing to you, but you still hurt him. Absolutely. You know what, Mr. Iftikhar, I've, I've got a, uh, you know, belief in life. Okay. Sometimes, uh, you know, you, you might be able to attribute your uh, reaction. So I'm, I'm talking about, when I say your reaction, I'm talking about the person who generally has a hate reaction or a dislike towards somebody. Okay. So sometimes you do have that dislike that can be attributed to maybe you know, a person's behavior, a language, uh, attitude, okay, something of that kind. But sometimes you may not have any specific uh, you know, point to which you can attribute it to. Okay. And I, I believe uh, it's normal. Okay. I believe it's natural because you, uh, it, it could just be, you know, just for no reason at all. Okay, I just don't seem to like somebody. Okay, and uh, I find a deep answer into something again that I'll relate to a movie. Okay, and the movie that we were talking about earlier uh, was Anand. Okay, and there's, there's a simple instance in that when you say that, you know, everybody is like a transmitter. Okay, so you pick up signals from a body, right? And uh, there's, there's also a very good story, but I'm not going to share the story right now. Okay, but it's, it's very simple. It's very normal. I'm so sometimes you do pick up these kind of signals. It could also be coming out because of vibes that a person holds towards you. Okay, it could be your reaction to the vibes that you're getting from a person. Okay, and uh, my only request is uh, rather than finding the answers, I think as true professionals, our objective should be to overcome that hate. Okay, and possibly start looking out for positives in that person and once again separate the role from the individual. So nothing wrong happens from our side. Oh, it was uh, quite interesting. And, uh, uh, and I follow up with the next question. Sure, please. The next question, uh, as in you work in a team across uh, different things. Some people are, uh, they think that they they are above all. Whereas in, I... Uh, normally, as you see, nah, I'm above all, nobody can beat me. Uh, so how to gel with that kind of a person? Okay, that kind of a people who think that I am Sarvasa, we call, call it, like Rajesh right. Kanna, I am a god. Absolutely. So what should you do in that? Absolutely. See, I, I think uh, 
you know it's it's not our objective nor a journey in life to change somebody else okay so i've got a very different view on that okay it's it's not my responsibility to change somebody in life okay but i definitely need to change the way it impacts my life okay and for that at least what is required is an honest communication with the person or an honest feedback with the person okay and when we talk about that feedback uh it it should be minus any emotions so it it should be a very polite nice way of sharing a feedback with the person where you also sounding off to the person and saying that you know if it's impacting my life i'm just sharing it with you because this is impacting my life it sometimes becomes difficult for me in this particular scenario when you said this when you did this but with specific instances okay so what you have done is you have at least done the right step of putting you know taking the right step taking a step forward taking the lead or taking the initiative of sharing the feedback in a very very impersonal very polite way with the person okay if in spite of that there is no change then of course and say you know as uh, human beings as professionals and say we definitely have our uh, you know choices that we make in life Right, but I, I think the right way is where we need to take the initiative. We need to take the responsibility if it's impacting us to at least have an honest conversation with the person, but minus any emotions. Thank you very much. Most welcome, sir. What are the triggers? Please explain. Okay, so I uh, see uh, there is one question. What are the triggers? Could you please explain them? Sure. sure so when when i was talking about triggers now for example what i meant was you know so often do we come across people and uh, today we see that very very often uh, you know when a lot of uh, professions are opening up uh, in our country worldwide okay uh, no longer are we uh, confined by the conventional way of doing things okay very often we see people moving on from professional so we see qualified engineers moving into different profession somebody is becoming a writer somebody is becoming an actor okay now see this is this is what we are actually talking about so if you know your positive trigger okay this is something that i enjoy doing then pull out time for that please keep yourself alive if you can make that your profession nothing like it because then day in day out you're doing something which you enjoy okay so fantastic so that's i'm giving a very small example of a positive trigger okay relating it to a profession something else uh, for somebody a positive trigger could be you know well i i just enjoy watching uh, you know maybe a movie i watch something else i i listen to some good music okay that's a positive trigger for me because my soul feeds on that for somebody it could be eating good food okay now these are small triggers but what i'm saying is just look at what keeps you going okay and if you're able to find time for that okay if you are able to find how you can make it possibly where you spending majority of the time in life okay nothing like it okay so that's on the positive side if i talk about a negative trigger i i'll give you very simple examples first okay and then related to the broader aspect okay how often do we see that uh, you know sometimes when you're driving a vehicle and somebody just goes past you very very closely okay you you tend to lose focus on what you were thinking or where you're going you're upset with that person okay you become angry maybe you know you you actually uh, give the person with some very special words okay now my question here is how can somebody else okay actually control your emotions okay now that's that's a trigger that you need to identify for yourself that i lose my temper very soon okay i get easily pulled in by somebody else's actions okay and i start reacting to people okay now that's a trigger for you okay so keep away from those situations you need to stretch yourself your conscious mind need mind needs to take over that i need to keep away from this behavior okay it it could be another trigger for some people it could be loss of focus loss of concentration it's a negative trigger something that uh, you know all of a sudden disturbs me okay it could be uh, noise okay it could be somebody talking about me uh, for some people it could be feedback feedback to me i don't take it very well that's a negative trigger i start feeling angry i start getting demotivated now stretch yourself so identify those triggers okay stretch yourself there 
Now, if I take it to the professional world, I'll I'll give you a very simple example over here. Okay, a person like me who reached possibly the position of, uh, you know, managing director in my previous role. Okay, if if you ask me, did I actually working? Uh, did I enjoy working on Excel sheets? No, never. I, something that I didn't like at all. Okay, I was very happy interacting with people, sitting in front of people. So meeting customers, meeting my team members, fantastic. I love it. Okay, sitting on Excel sheets, analyzing data. No, I don't like it. Okay, now that's a negative trigger for me, but a part of my profession, I have to do it. Okay, so then I need to find a way out. Okay, so I go and request to, you know, my management or say that, you know, I create a scope for somebody who can help me with Excel sheets. I would prefer discussing the analysis. I would prefer uh, inferring, uh, you know, conclusions, okay, from that data, but processing that data, no, really, I, I don't enjoy that. Okay, now that's what I mean when I say, look out for those triggers. So you need to find a way out for that. Either it could be working on yourself or it could be working on the situation. Okay, but then look at that. Thank you so much. And uh, there's one more question. What, uh, what do you mean by agile? Right, okay. So uh, the example that we were talking about was, uh, you know, Winston Churchill, where we said that, uh, you know, he could not change his style of dealing with people. Okay. Now, when we say agile, what we're saying over here is how fast are you able to adapt to the changed circumstances? Okay. So if you are a thorough professional, I said today you might be required to give a tough feedback to one of your team members. It could be a difficult conversation to have. Okay. But you have to do it because it's your role. Your role calls for that. But the very same person, after he's done fantastic and he's given you results, okay, you might have to change your style, your interaction, your communication with the same person, okay, and you're behaving differently with the same person now because you want him to feel encouraged, motivated, rewarded. Okay, now think of it in a different way. Uh, you know, you have a meeting with one individual where you're supposed to act, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a difficult conversation that you're having with the person, okay. The very next meeting that you have is another person whom you're supposed to motivate because the person has a lot of potential, okay? And you're supposed to motivate the person to get the best out of him. And what are you doing? You're actually changing your style very soon in, from the first meeting to the second meeting, okay? A very simple way of putting across the meaning of agile, okay? But it's how fast are you able to adapt the flexibility in your styles? How fast do you move from one style into another, okay? I, I gave you a very transactional example and so this, this could be taken right up to a very, very strategic level. Okay, thank you so much. And I, I do not see any further questions that are raised. Let me see. Yeah, so people are now thanking you for a wonderful session. So I think uh, we'll be concluding this session. So thank you so much, uh, Mr. Puri, for such a wonderful and insightful session. It was really helpful. And I believe that everyone who attended this session have benefited from it as well. And they will try to implement it in their life to ensure that they not only uh, move ahead in their life, in professional life, but in their personal life as well. So it was a wonderful session overall, and I personally enjoyed it as well. So thank you so much for your time as well. And to all the participants, it was wonderful to have you all on board in the uh, Web Talk for Employability Training Program. So we want to request you that AMP keeps organizing sessions by such sessions by highly qualified professionals and experts in their particular field to share their learnings and viewpoints to guide not only the youth, but everyone. So we request you to keep joining these sessions, benefit from them, and also share these uh, sessions with your friends, your family members, your colleagues, so they can also join these free sessions and they can benefit from, from such sessions as well. As we all know that uh, nowadays, due to this pandemic, the entire world is moving ahead digitally. So these sessions will also help you improve, your, improve yourself to, digital, to digitalize yourself as well. So thank you so much. Uh, we'll now be ending this session with a short dua. Uh, Iftikhar Bhai, is there anything you would like to add? I just would like to conclude with a thanks to Mr. Ankush for giving his precious time. And actually, I have, I have also learned a lot, to be matter of fact. It's my pleasure. I'm, I'm humbled hearing I, this. I, I, I would request Mr. Ankush to, if they can be able to give us 
uh, uh, one one or couple of couple of slots more to where we can invite the professionals who have experience of five ten years who are currently working for a short webinar, same kind of a webinar, which sure. can be helpful to the working professional. So that's pleasure. a request from us. My pleasure. Thank you. It'll be it'll be it'll be an honor. Yeah. Okay, and uh, my my thanks to everyone as well. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Iftikhar, Mr. Shahzad, Mr. Hassan, and thanks to all the participants for their patience. Thank you so much. Honor being. Thank you very much. So, um, Mr. Puri, uh, uh, will see if how we can uh, manage and how we can arrange these sessions for working professional. Uh, somebody from the team will try to get in touch with you in terms of your availability, and will ensure that. The session is taken care of according to your availability as well. So I think Aisan Bhai will uh, get in touch with you. Uh, we just request you to uh, be available for AMC to uh, help the community and the society to grow as well. Sure. My pleasure. Okay. My honor. So uh, we'll now be ending this session with a short dua. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. Ya Wala La Walin. Ya Khir La Khirin. Ya Dal Quwwat Al Matin. Ya Rahim Al Masakin. Ya Rahman Rahim. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري واحلل لغة من لساني يفقهوا قولي سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين Thank you everyone for attending the session we'll be ending this session for now Thank you Thank you so much have a nice evening everyone bye bye Thank you Bye-bye.